Hello my fellow researchers and welcome to another video in this video series. My name is Jason and in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the Pearson product moment correlation. And this is uh, video two in this uh, video series on the Pearson product moment correlation. And here we're just going to solve for R. Okay. Um, what we have or what we're given is uh, data uh, on two variables of which are continuous. Okay, so we're, because we have two continuous variables, we're allowed to conduct the Pearson product moment correlation, and we're just going to assume that this data came from uh, a normally distributed population. So, this is how I set up my page before I actually do the calculation, and it's good to have your formulas uh, handy. So I'm just going to start with uh, the top here, and the first uh, value we want to find is the sum of x. So I'm just going to sum up these values uh, in our x uh, column, and that's going to come up to uh, 12. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the sum of y. So if I sum up all these values in here, I'm going to get 32. And I'm going to calculate n. So n is the number of people in our sample. And because we're doing a Pearson product moment correlation, we know that each person has been measured once on, on variable x and once on variable y. So there's eight people in total. And then I'm going to go down the line here. We have the sum of x squared. Okay, so if I, if I square 1 and, and 4 and 1, 1, 2, and 0, and 2, and 1, uh, you can do that in your head or on a calculator. Uh, that's going to be 28. And sum of y squared, again, sum, uh, square each of these values. So you want to square 7, square 2, square 3, and then add, add them all up. Uh, and so we get 168. And here we're going to calculate now the, the xy column. So all you're going to do is you're going to multiply the x value by its corresponding y value. Okay, so 1 times 7, 7, and if I just go down the list here, 8, 3, Six, zero, zero, six, five. Okay, I hope that's right. Um, now we can calculate the sum of x, y. So we're just going to add up these values here. And if we add them all up, we get 35. Over here now, a sum of squares of x. Okay, so we're going to uh, use our formula now. You can see here, the first formula is what we want. Uh, so the sum of x squared minus the sum of x, and then squared that value, divided by n. Okay, so um, this is kind of why I have everything in this particular order, uh, so that we, you know, we always have what we need. So uh, you can sort of do this uh, all in one step on your calculator. Uh, I usually start with, with this part right here, and then I divide by n, and then I uh, subtract this value, and then I just reverse the sign on the answer. Um, sort of a, a trick, I guess. Uh, so if you do that calculation, we will get 10. Whoops, I don't know what that was. And if we're going to do uh, this calculation here, we're going to get 40. Okay. Well, I'll just show you uh, how to calculate SSY quickly here. Um, so we're going to do the, the sum of Y squared, right? 168 minus... 32 squared over 8. Okay, um, so 168, 128, which then equals 40. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate our sum of products, and so we're going to use uh, formula number 3. And you can see here, sum of products is equal to the sum of xy, which we've calculated to be 35 minus uh, the sum of x times the sum of y over n. So that's going to be 12 times 32 over 8. And then if we solve for 12 times 32 over 8, we get 48, um, which then gives us uh, negative 13. So sum of products is negative 13. And finally, we have to calculate r. And r is equal to the sum of products over the root of sum of squares x times sum of squares y. So we've already calculated everything we need to do that. We need 
10 times 40 in the denominator. And if you solve for that, we're going to get negative 0.65. So our, our, our value is negative 0.65. And that, that uh, tells us the, the direction and strength of the relationship between the x variable and the y variable. So you could say because it's negative, uh, it's a negative relationship, or an in, or these variable x is inversely related to variable y, uh, and because it's it's 0.65, you could say that's that's strong. Wow! So there's a there's a strong relationship between variable x and variable y because uh, 0.65 is is above 0.5, uh, and and generally anything above 0.5 we think is is probably strong, uh, or at least it, it looks strong. But but uh, maybe. You know, maybe this is just uh, by chance. Maybe we got this strong relationship. Um, just so happened that you know these people or, or these people um, uh, just happen to have these two variables strongly related. They may not represent the rest of the population. So we want to find out. Um, you know, is is this significant? And so I've I've wrote this out here already. Uh, say we choose an alpha level of 0.05 and we're doing a two-tailed test. Uh, we want to calculate our degrees of freedom. Okay, so uh, degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 2, which is equal to 6. And if you check your, your table for your critical values of, of r uh, in the back of your textbook, you'll find an uh, r critical value of 0 0.7 or 0.7. Um, and because our calculated r value is is not past the critical point. Uh, 0.65 is less than 0.7, and disregard the sign. Uh, we know we have to conclude that this is a non-significant relationship. Our, our sample showed us a strong relationship, but it's it's not significant, and primarily probably the reason is because we just don't have that many people. Uh, if we were trying to generalize this to a, a normal distribution, um, you know we are we are looking at uh, a big population and and so this is uh, this is likely to be due to, to chance or it could be due to chance uh, and we just don't have enough evidence to say that it isn't chance so that's how you calculate R and test for its significance um, in the next video I'm going to be showing you how to uh, calculate R on SPSS thanks for watching cheers